Hello folks and welcome. Debian 12 Bookworm, XFCE Desktop. Today I'm going to talk about expanded system information. I'll give it to you in graphical. There's one application that you can install and I'll also show terminal commands for uh, different kind of system information. Uh, example is if you're adding new toys to your uh, computer, I can show you how you can get motherboard information without opening up your case. That way you can shop for that correct RAM if you are, let's say, buying those kind of toys. So general system information is here. Expanded information I'm going to be showing today. Not everybody's cup of tea, but more importantly, if you want to know a little bit about more expanded information, I'll also show some terminal commands that will list that in sections for some additional uh, info and troubleshooting. Welcome folks, filming in 1920 by 1080. Adjust your YouTube play accordingly, if necessary. All right, so this wallpaper I got uh, from wallpaperswide.com of this dude looking in his computer. I just thought it was appropriate for this video. Uh, anyways, if you'd like to subscribe, look for that icon in the corner of that hiker person with yellow brackets. All right, let's talk about the graphical application first. First thing I'm gonna do is make it a little bit bigger for you. When this is installed, and it will not be installed by default, it is called System Profiler and Benchmark. You can certainly install it yourself. However, when you go to Synaptic Package Manager, you will not find it by this name. I will show you what it's actually called and how you can find it. But let's talk about the preliminaries, what it can do for you. So when you open this thing up, uh, depending on your screen resolution, this may open slightly differently as far as the color, but more importantly, you will get a summary. Operating system is Debian 12. The central processing unit, in my case, is an AMD this. I can get more expanded information also when I use different commands a little bit later using terminal. Random access memory in KIB format. Translation of that big number is 32 gigabytes. Most people that run home computers don't need that kind of RAM. I just happen to use this computer and others in my office for other things. The motherboard may be interesting because let's face it, before I open up the case, whether it's a laptop or a tower computer, it'd be nice to know what kind of motherboard's inside. And this will tell you that without opening the box. So you can go shopping for that proper RAM if you're trying to upgrade. Graphics, I will show you more expanded information using a terminal command for some more additional info. So one more time, filming in 1920 by 1080. The storage devices are not listed here. I can use the file manager for that, or I can use terminal. The audio device here that I'm using for a microphone is called Blue. It doesn't identify itself as a logic tech, but I have a command for that that I can run out of terminal that you will see that it's a logic tech Blue microphone. Anyways, there's lots of information that this graphical application can use, including benchmark tools. So how do I find it if it's not called System Profiler and Benchmark. Well, I'm going to actually use this word here as a search criteria in Synaptic called Hard Info, one word. I'm just doing a little bit of cheating. So I'm going to go to uh, open up Synaptic My Way. So Application Finder, Big X, S as in Sam, and Enter. And I'll put in my password. You know, there's lots of software in here, 63,000 plus. So I'm going to do a search and use the word hard info, one, one name under one name under name lookup because you can change the categories. And you should be able to find this immediately. And then you can install it. All right. That's how you find that application. Sometimes you'll find on different Linux distros that this is actually installed by default. I've seen it actually. I'm going to open up File Manager for a second. I have a document here for you. 
Uh, you can handwrite this down. You can certainly do a screenshot. That's all up to you or just listen. So the graphical option, option one, I already showed you by hard info. The next one is called uh, terminal options for system information. So I, I'm going to use INXI first and then I'm going to talk about different versions of LS. I'll have LSBOK, LSMOD, LSUSB, LS SCSI, LS PCI, LS CPU. You can see they all start with the word LS on it. All right, so a lot of people are fairly new to Linux. You can always back this video up and then do your screenshot by hitting pause. All right, I'm going to close this for a second and open up terminal. Make this bigger for you. Control Shift plus plus plus. Gary is our user for today's just a made up name on my name of my computer is Debian 12. So you can use man pages uh, to look up information. If you don't know what man is, type in man man. So it's an interface of system reference manuals for commands and it has lots of them in here. So I'm going to hit Q because down here in white it tells you use Q to quit. So I did. If I type in MAN, I can type in MAN LS. List directory contents, but I also have lots of options. You can see part of them right here. Small dash A, big dash A, that kind of stuff. I'm going to hit Q again. We also have this command here, which I'm going to start with. Except I'm going to do an MAN IN XI. So you can see the definition of it. Command line system information script for console and IRC. That's kind of a mouthful for a lot of people. System information is what you're going to get out of this. Now INXI is installed on a lot of systems and some do not have it installed, but they do have it in their package managers. INXI by itself doesn't produce a lot of info. There's three lines, CPU, kernel, and storage. However, if you use INXI, and if you use my command of dash big F XE, you get a wealth of information. Now, why did I use that command? Well, first of all, it gives me fairly complete info, but it strips out personal information also at the same time. You may see this in different derivatives when you uh, hear about some of the hotline troubleshooting with some people. This is very common. The command on the tail end, though, can be very different. This just happened to be one of my favorites. All right, the FXZ strips out personal information, but it also gives me quite a bit of detail on the system. Here's the Linux kernel. The desktop is an XFCE version 418.1. Again, it's this Debian 12 bookworm. It's even got the GCC number. This is a 64-bit, also denoted in the architecture. And this is a desktop. System is ASUS, so the motherboard, MOBO, is an ASUS tech. And here's the model. What's the first thing that you do when you're trying to shop for RAM? Do you just go buy any RAM for your computer? No, you probably should find out what kind of motherboard you have. So you can plug in that RAM, if the RAM is even pluggable. I'm going to highlight that number for you because yours will be different. Right click and copy. Web browser time. Anytime you're adding RAM specifically to your particular motherboard, you should find out some information about it. I'm going to go directly to the manufacturer. This says ASUS on it. Terminal. This is ASUS. And that's the model number. Technical specs are here. So if I suspected I have bad RAM or adding RAM or upgrading RAM, I'll know what fits in here by technical specs because I looked up the motherboard model number. You just don't go buy any RAM and jam it in here. The second thing this will tell me too is what kind of slots this has without me opening the box up. Underneath this metal shield, there are two of these where I can purchase NVMe drives install them and then put this plate on top of it. It's a heat shield, a heat sink. Keeps it cool in other words. I have one of these installed on this system. 
You will see that in here in a minute. But more importantly, you can copy your motherboard information here. When you open up that other application here, I can't highlight this number and copy it, but I can do the clip and I can do the generate or I can handwrite as an FYI. The other thing I'm going to point out to you is the graphics card only has three pieces of information here. When I look at it in here though, under I'm going to skip over CPU, you can probably see that. Under graphics, it explains what the model number is in here. It's an NVIDIA graphics card. Here's the model number. It's a GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. It even tells me what I'm currently running in. 1920 by 1080. This card is capable of doing 4K very nicely also. You get the idea so far? All right. That number that you saw over here, that NV137 is this one right here. All right, moving along. The microphone I'm speaking to you on is a Logitech Blue microphone. Over here it says USB audio Blue microphone. Not a big deal though. This explains the manufacturer. It's also USB type, which is exactly what it identifies in here. Pulse audio, network, wireless or ethernet, Bluetooth, and hard drives, NVMe. Hard drives are not listed here, so I'm gonna use another tool for that. File manager time. In here, I have my SanDisk USB connected stick. I have the file system for Linux, which is denoted by root. If you needed to know these folders, if you are fairly new to, to Linux, on my about section, uh, you can find my mission statement and also links in there. One of them goes to uh, a website that explains what these folders are defined as. All right, so on NVMe, is this drive right here. It is a Western Digital and that's the model number. You can actually see it also in here. It's called Demo. That drive right there is the human name for it. It is a one terabyte drive and then if I look at the size of it, it is in GIB format. If you need to do the math, you can open up a web browser and type in what is GIB versus uh, TB, terabyte versus gigabyte, that kind of thing. Or GIB versus GB. We have another drive in here called SDA. It's a standard solid state SATA drive, serial ATA. It is reported as a 223 GIB drive, 240 gigabyte in other words. It's this one. All right, we have a third device, it's uh, SDB, which is denoted by a USB, and it's called SanDisk Ultra. That's this guy right there. That's the size of it. You can see the wealth of information in here. Down here is the partitions. So on SDA, this drive here, my primary drive, partition two, is formatted with extension 4. It's currently 3% in use, denoted by root. That's the file system. Okay, and you can also see free space in here. All right, so currently 3% is in use, in use, 3%. The second partition um, is what this is stored on, not the first. The first partition, though, is called a formatted with VFAT, which is the boot partition in this system. The third partition is a swap partition. And the reason I installed that there, because I'm going to be, uh, I can use Hibernate. Se uh, sensors and some other stuff down here, including uptime memory used. I have another command for that also, which is not listed in here. It's called free. I've shown this before. I'll do it in human readable. 
So I have roughly 32 gigabytes on this machine, 31 rounded off, 2.7 in use. This says 2.4 GIB, this is GI. All right, I have an excessive amount of random in this machine. I also have a swap that you can see it's in here. Okay, so this is from one command. And that was INXI with the option of dash big F XC. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about LS commands. All right, you, you can do the basic, the LS command. Let's do that first. Start with a clear slate here. And if I just do LS, it's what? It just lists my desktop through videos folders. So let's look at Thunar again. Here's Gary's home folders, desktop through videos, not a big deal. But I have more than that uh, actually underneath the hood. So if I wanted to see the hidden, it, I have more goodies. To view it in the file manager, I can do it two ways. I can do an ls space dash a, and that'll also show me hidden. Or I can do ls space big A. So that's two ways to do an ls. What is LS to begin with? MAN, LS. Directory, list directory contents. However, it does more than that because you can use LS and some other derivatives. I have over here LSBLK. I'm going to show you that one first. I probably won't get to all of them, but I will show you some of them. LS B L K sounds like a bacon and lettuce and something sandwich. A little humor there. Lick, uh, list block devices. I'm going to hit Q. LS B L K will make more sense to you now. Let's go open up uh, Thunar and go to computer. All right, so let's take a look at this for a second if you know nothing about the file system. But you know this says file system on it, and when you double click it, it has this symbol here, forward slash. That represents root, and I know my hidden is turned on because I can see a hidden cache folder. Control H to turn that off. I also have uh, in my about section on my YouTube side, if you'd like to know what these folders are used for, um, go look at my mission statement, and below it are some links. One of them will explain the file system. So what we're looking at is lsblk command. This is SDA, and the SDA in this system is this drive right here. This drive has three partitions, as I pointed out, using the INXI command. The first partition is boot. The second partition is root, that's Linux, and the last partition is swap. Now you know how to read that easily using one command. SDB, SDB1 has one partition on it and I have it mounted so it's using the fuzzy friendly name of USB stick. Okay, that's this guy. That's this one right here. So if I click that, it says Media Gary USB stick, the fuzzy friendly name that we're calling it. The system calls this, though, when I point at it, is SDB1. That's exactly how it's listed here also. The one below it says NVMe0N1, and then the partition is NVMe0N1P1. It only has one partition. I will open the demo drive to let you see that. It's just a bunch of folders. This is an NVMe drive that sits underneath this plate. Oh, there was a reason that I had this open still. So we're going to focus in on this for a second. This is a USB stick, and it's very common that people plug these in on the back side of their computers. Think of a tower computer. It sits underneath your desk or on your desk or you can't see the back. 
you don't have any ports in the front or maybe all the ports in the front are occupied. So you stick it in the back. Some of these USB sticks are very small, the size of your thumbnail. I've seen a whole bunch, of, I've got a whole bunch of those. Sometimes you lose track of these things. So what happens when you do this though, you may think that the USB stick is gone, but it's not gone. In here, I can still tell you whether it's plugged in or not by using this command right here. So I'm going to rerun LSBLK by using the upper arrow key on my keyboard and hitting enter. You can see that it's still plugged in even though you can't see it in the file manager. All right, it doesn't have anything else besides like this mount point here with the fuzzy friendly name of Gary USB stick but you know it's plugged in. So if you're looking for that elusive stick and you have one of those tower computers, this is one way to tell if it's plugged in. I could certainly use this also by taking a peek at that and find it here. Just wanted to point out a couple of things for you. All right, so what happens when I physically remove it? The file manager updates instantaneously. If I rerun this command, this will disappear. I'm not clearing the screen because I wanted you to see this. Now, when I reran the last lsblk command, I have the SDA with the three partitions on it and the NVMe. I do not have SDB. My USB stick is not here. Opening up Thunar, I am going to reinsert it. All right, the system shows it immediately is there. I'm not gonna click on it just yet. I wanted you to see this. So what I'm gonna do is rerun that same command and let you see that it's identified again in here, but it doesn't have the name here yet. So as I open this with my mouse and allow it to populate with folders, then if I re update LSBLK, the name shows up. Earlier, when I didn't click on it after inserting it, it doesn't have the name. This has the name on it. Just some interesting little commands with that. I'm going to punch up clear. LS USB. I don't think I need to do a man pages on that. That is just the USB bus. Right now, this tells me that USB stick is in the machine. I just unplugged it and now it's gone. If you want, I'll clear this and rerun that command. All right. And then I'll plug it back in and rerun the command with that screen on. So it reappeared right here. So it's on bus two, device some something and ID something something. So a couple of more toys that I'm gonna point out to you, not that I'm gonna bore you to death with the whole list. Here's my Logitech Blue Microphone, the thing I'm speaking to you on. I also have a Logitech computer mouse and keyboard that is uh, using a bolt receiver. A bolt receiver is something that is uh, fairly new to Logitech. It's a secure dongle that uh, can be reprogrammed. You can use Solar for that under Linux. Logitech doesn't really provide a lot of fun toys for Linux as of yet, and I'm hoping they will someday. But more importantly, you can use Solar to program bolt receivers. What kind of keyboard do I have? Well, this is a Logitech keyboard that has three channels on it. I can uh, have channel one pro programmed in on one bolt receiver, then channel two and channel three. In other words, three different computers using the same keyboard, but not at the same time. I also have a computer mouse also made by Logitech that's called an MX Master 3S that also has three different communication channels, all running through the same single bolt receiver. All right, just pointing it out to you. 
I don't have solar installed, it's not being displayed up here. That doesn't mean it can't run. You can probably tell what this is. It says Bluetooth on it. And uh, ASUS Tech is that motherboard and it has a LED controller on it. Just to give you a couple of examples of this different LS commands. So that was LS USB and the previous command was LS BLK. Now I'm at the 25th minute, so let me just make mention of some of the honorable mentions. So LS mod will show you a status of your modules for Linux kernel. You can also do man pages on LS mod. And um, LS SCSI is not installed on my machine, but if you have SCSI devices, you can install that through Synaptic Package Manager. LS PCI is exactly what it says, your PCI bus, and then detailed information on LS CPU. Central Processing Unit. Hopefully you found this information informative and more importantly, you can utilize this when you're trying to add some new toys to your system. Thank you for watching.